barrel bomb attack. Senior international correspondent Arwa Damon has the story with images from the Aleppo Media Centre. And a warning here, some of those images are difficult to watch. Before the bombs, the siege and the war, Mohammed Ala al-Jalil was an electrician. Before the death, the violence and the hunger, 10-year-old Doha and Muhammad loved going to school. This is their Aleppo. عرفنا محل مرمى البراميل منطقة فيها سكان مدنيين. اللي أتذكره كان في طيارة تضرب وأنا كنت تابع الشجرة برتان لأخوتي. بعدين فجأة فجربي. She had gone unnoticed in the chaos until Muhammad happened to glance back. كنت كثير خايفة وجسمي كان كثير أبو جاني من كتلة محجور اللي نزلت فوقيش. رجعت في عسيرة الإسعاف بأقصى سرعة يعني إنه بدأ حاول بأقصى سرعة إنه أنقذ حياته لأنه حسيت إنه لسه فيه روح. Barely alive, drifting in and out of consciousness. Doctors were able to stabilize her, but her younger sister Yasmin ended up in Turkey for treatment. The siblings communicate by Facebook Messenger. But that is not an option for Doha and the rest of her family. Turkey only opens the border for medical emergencies. Doha says she feels lost, her life in pieces. And that is where Mohammed, her savior, comes in again. He has built a playground for children and created a sanctuary for stray cats. يعني كأنه البنت هي بنتي أو خاصة فيني يعني إنه بدأت تضل طول العمر أعتني فيها لذلك عم بستمر هيك كل فترة بروح بطلت عليها وبجيب لها عندي على الحديقة. It's where we hear her laugh, where in Syria's battlefield, a child's gleeful cries are stolen moments. Arwa Damon Siena, Gaziantep, Turkey.